Hello and welcome to episode three of our weekly recap. We are your hosts, Ashish and Silesh, and today we're going to bring to you our top three for the week. Silesh, go for it. So we have the the Pixel, right? So there was a Pixel event yesterday, and uh, we, we uh, in the past we talked about how uh, smartphones have reached the peak of innovation. So with regards to the Pixel and the Google phones, almost every phone has a fold, right? Except Apple. So that actually brings to my mind, like, is Apple falling back with regards to, like, folding phones? Look, I'm here to defend Apple's honor. (laughs) (laughs) Go for it. Let's do it. (laughs) Um, What I'd say is that think about how convenient it is to drop your phone, the non-foldable phone, onto a wireless charger. You can't do that with a you can't do that with a folding phone. It's a little awkward when it comes to aligning the the charging mats with the with the Google the, not the Google with yeah. any fold fold phones. You have to completely uh, open it. You have to align it. There is a bit of a yeah. bit of a dance and song that you have to go through. The second thing is uh, when it comes to tapping for payments. Now you have variables that are helping you with the tapping, right? Like, your Apple Watch, you can just tap onto a whatever and it makes the payment for you using Apple Pay. Your phone, you just tap, works. NFC with uh, near field uh, communication with... Uh, Android works too. And it does, but with uh, folds, Android works too. with folds, it becomes a little complicated because again, you have to, there's a bit of an alignment issue. Yeah, you have to fold it, then do then uh, the... Exactly. The, yeah. And... And and I would also say in terms of uh, how long the entire system lasts, because you keep constantly folding along a certain set of pixels, the the flexi cable that connects the two monitors, because essentially they're two different displays at the end of the day, right? Mm. So the connector, the crease, line. the crease line, it's going to face the same problems that laptops do, the ones that have recently yeah. introduced a bit of a fold where you have like two displays on your laptop. They're going to, it, the cable's going to be vulnerable. So there are issues with the fold. And I think what Apple does is Apple tries to make sure, sure, like every iteration has issues, but Apple tries to make sure that they're giving you iterations that are not going to be able to. I mean, so you that. are defending the durability concept. So I am if I'm you're paying as much as you are, yeah. If you're yeah. paying as much as you are for the devices that they're selling, do you not want them to last at least for a year? Yeah. So what are your they they dropped within a year? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. So what are your thoughts on the the new introduction of rings? You know, so all these companies are starting like the auto ring was the original pioneer, right? So and then we have all these other companies. Noise has a noise has a ring, ultra human Mm -hmm. has a ring. You have speculation that there was a patent filed a couple of months back, like sometime in August. Uh, by Apple about uh, haptic touch on rings. Apple yeah. and Samsung are looking at wearables as well. In my opinion, they're just looking at expanding on the wearable market. Uh, both companies expanded initially using the Apple Watch, the Samsung Watch. Google got into the watch business as well by acquiring uh, Fitbit. Mm. Now it's just it's just a matter of time. Like it's just a matter of expansion. Like when uh, Amazon came up with Alexa, Google came up with the Nest. Apple decided to get into the foray as well, right, with the home port. Yeah. And now I'm not saying that they didn't all start innovating at the same point in time, but this was in terms of product release, this is what Apple is, this is what we got to see. It's just, so just getting into it. My opinion is the ring is actually really good because I like, a lot of people like to enjoy wearing like analog watches, like not just the digital, uh, you know, smartwatch, but, uh, but wearing an analog watch hinders your, you know, like, um, completely... Um, Wearing two watches. Right? Yeah, basically, right. Yeah, so so instead of that, the the ring will take care of all your, you know, it records everything what you need to record for the for the phone, right? So your sleep monitor, everything goes in. There's also a device called Whoop that uh, I think, uh, I forget his name, but Mr. Wonderful, basically, the shark. Mm. He wears mm. a Whoop and uh, he's very into watches, so he wears a fancy analog watch. And then the book mm. band on the other hand. So yeah. That's an alternative that people are exploring, but sure, like the rings, 
depending on how accurate the ring gets. Also, like in terms of blood oxygen monitoring, you don't have a, a blood oxygen monitor here. You have an oxygen monitor at the end of your finger because accuracy improves. When uh, Apple came up with that, uh, you know, that, uh, that, like you can have that ECG yeah. test on the Apple yeah. Watch. Like you put your finger here on this band and then connect it to your wrist. They had yeah. a doctor come in and say that, yeah, this actually works. These readings can be shared with medical professionals. They made a, a large hue and cry about it, and which is it's a fantastic piece of innovation. But when it came to blood oxygen, their disclaimer was, this is like, use it for recreational purposes, use it for fun. Like, it's, it's not like as medically serious as everything else was. Yeah. So there is an accuracy issue, and I think the ring is going to help solve global issues. So yeah, fantastic. So let's cover our next topic. So, so we have this upheaval in the entire American Congress. So the the speaker was ousted recently. Speaker What's your Kevin opinion? McCarthy. Do you so think Donald Trump's going to come in? Will Donald Trump speaker? said he did say he is going to come in as a, he can he can become an interim speaker. Legally, it's possible. Like you can bring in, um, you can be a speaker as long as uh, you win the vote in in the house. You don't have to be a congressman or a congresswoman part uh, part of the to be part of the speaker. Um, the second thing is they have these certain rules which actually prevents, but they are not legally binding because Donald Trump is under an indictment. So if you're an under an indictment, you can they have these rules with the Republican National Committee rules so that you cannot become uh, the speaker if you are, if you are under indictment. But uh, those are just rules. They're not legally binding, so you can always break it. But I think the major um, part is, yeah, I mean, Trump is actually endorsing um, Jim Jordan from Ohio. So he's actually part of the Freedom Caucus, right? So the MAGA, uh, the MAGA Republicans, and then you have the the establishment Republicans. So he's part of the Freedom Caucus. So they're going to, that's going to turbocharge a lot of things. It's going to stop a lot of funding aid to Ukraine. And it's going to boost a lot of um, funding to the border. If so the, the, they already started building the wall, which is <laughs> embarrassing for the, the Biden administration. So that is the major report with that. And uh, take us to take us to another place that has a wall between. Yeah, as we speak, uh, we have, um, you know, Israel bombing uh, Hamas right now. It just launched the attacks. Um, This has been going on. This is the major second major escalation which happened uh, within the last few years uh, after Biden took office. The first was remember when there was the the Time magazine cover, um, the. Iron Dome getting activated, all the rockets coming down uh, a few years back. And that was one of the major escalations, right? And sure, it subsided after that. There have been issues all throughout, right? Like when, hmm. uh, Trump was particularly vociferous about these instances where when he went and made a deal with the Taliban during his tenure to exit hmm. Afghanistan. And, uh, and, and I remember like there was a post where America apparently said that Never again are we going to face the sort of indignity of exit that we did in Vietnam. Something along those lines mm. of paraphrasing. But mm. uh, that was exactly how it ended up with, when America was exiting Afghanistan. And now you have this. So clearly, and there were also pieces where, like, it's not like the American military isn't mighty. It's amazing. It's probably the best in the world. Mm. There was another piece that I was reading from earlier this week about how... Uh, an American plane, like maybe like a drone operated plane, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. shot down a, a drone or something in over Syria. Mm-hmm. You see Amer- mm-hmm. America's military exerting its might. But when it comes to these instances where, like, it's funny, right? Like, Trump is, has, it shows that Trump has exerted a certain degree of authority around the world, which prevented prevented the explosion that you're getting. You're, experiencing right now see trump is unpredictable so people didn't want to take a chance so he was the first president to go to north korea and step foot 
and you know do a peace negotiation and you had abraham records which came under trump um you know which which brought, uh, brought peace in the middle east there was that no son in law was the i mean yeah i mean jared kushner jared kushner did the job you know i mean as much as flacky gets you know he did go and get that done you know abraham records was a success how much ever democrats hate it it was under trump so so that's uh you have to give um you know where where wherever there is good uh work done you have to give props for it sure but like you don't have to answer this but quick question what are your thoughts on the recent indictment of trump uh he's going to sail through i mean the only thing i'm wor- he's going to should be worried about the georgia indictment but if he becomes president he can pardon himself so or if you any can pardon yourself yeah you can pardon yourself so it's sure. legally possible so except the uh, the state indictment which is from georgia where the pre- basically the governor has to pardon somebody so unless if it's a republican governor uh, in georgia you won't have an issue then yeah so i mean that's still going to be thrown under the rug anyways it's not a big deal once you become president you can't go after a president and then by the time he gets done statutory of limitations gets done so you have like 5 years for certain certain things you have to sue within that time frame that statutory of limitations that's scary so, but all right i mean i say that's scary because there have been instances where it's it's been clearly documented right? there there have been some fishy things and yeah. whatever like his policies at the end of the day have been great for the like in the policies that he, the economic policies way is operated is surprisingly good for america deal wise so for him it's a do or die if he loses it's it's over for him he has to win so if you look at it from his perspective he has to win for all this to um, be put behind the past so so you have anyways, what a potential track record but all right interesting mm. cool so what is what is the third topic you want to discuss um jobs hmm. jobs now this is now this is something that you'd have to give props to the Biden administration for 336,000 new jobs so in august uh in august of this year it was about 200 something 227,000 jobs and hmm. this time we hit quite a bit higher 336,000 jobs right so yeah 336,000 new jobs which begs yeah, the question so... that with which begs the question that in the current market problem. in the current market with exactly like in the current market with high rates with inflation seeing where it is what's happening what's your what are your thoughts there it goes against the convention i i still i'm still kind of kind of baffled at how are all these jobs getting added and then you know the we have at phenomenal rates the the interest rates are so high and the jobs being added so and you have you know the inflation cooled down a little bit but i feel like it's it goes against the conventional wisdom right so your your jobs and the uh, the rates don't are inversely proportional so but i still don't get it how are they doing it so i'm going to say that this can be at, like not the jobs but uh, i would say that there is a bit of kenzie in economics and play where you have uh government the fed intervening constantly with uh, high, the rate hikes and with the stimulus packages that i'm talking about over the course of uh, the administration so far the biden administration so far of course nobody wants to see an a recession and experience it which is why there was that word play as well right like two continues down quarters technically is the definition of recession but then the government came out and said well you see jobs are going up so that's not true but the yeah, jobs they, are going up for a bunch of reasons right like one of the reasons was simply uh pension funds were no longer cutting it so mm. people needed to come back into the workforce to start working again and unemployment and employment like the metric is of course uh it, it counts the workforce that is employed right like after you after you pass retirement age you're no longer counted within the workforce populace so i don't know how the math is, has been done like mm. if you are employed and above 70 am i counting on the numerator and not the denominator i don't know but maybe like who knows 
I, I so still it's, remember they changed the definition of recession, right? Because yeah, they, they changed the definition. the narrative. They didn't fit the narrative, which mm. I, I get that. Like, I would sympathize with that. I think it's a very smart move because at the end of the day, what does a recession create? A recession is a part of a, a, recession is a, part of a business cycle. You are going to see uh, crests and troughs. What matters primarily is how people react to it. If I say it's a recession and you start pulling out of the market, everybody hurts. If I say we're doing fine, like stay, stay the course, like stay steady. Five years down the line, I could just be like, yeah, there was an economic downturn, but things were fine. Like we handled it. That's the yeah. ideal condition. Like Silicon Valley, the bank, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have crashed if people didn't have a, like if there wasn't a run on the bank. It was a run on the bank because there was collective panic. That's what a recession essentially does. So I think the Biden administration played really, they played very, quite smart with that particular move. And uh, I think we're on the course for a soft landing, for sure, which makes me think that maybe we should consider putting, like, reinvesting in the market. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. So, what else? Uh, those are the major topics, right? So if you have any minor topics which caught your eye, one of the major things it caught my eye was... The, mi- uh, the major minor things you mean. Yeah, so the minor one was basically in the, India, uh, the, the, the RBI is, you know, it's, the bonds are floating and uh, we have the, we, we, uh, we are being added to the global uh, bond index, right? So which is going to flow in a lot of money from international players. That is a major um, news. I mean, minor news. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I would also say that like FTX is officially begun hmm. that unraveling is going to happen, and we will get to see what's going to happen, what, how it unfolds. Uh, Activism Blizzard's deal, I think that's going to close within the next week or so. Now that it's got all the approvals, uh, that, NFTs are yeah. NFTs are still weirdly big. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, don't get me wrong. I NFTs guess these uh, can have value. NFTs can have value, provided you construct the contract in a manner in which it has value. But right now, it feels like it's still largely design oriented. Here's a prop, and thank you for purchasing my prop. Adidas, Montclair are still exploring the NFTs on a regular basis, LVMH is. Uh, and like, maybe they're in our future value. I don't know. Like, considering the fact Remember, that we're going to Remember uh, Justin Bieber's, um, you know, board eight. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned, you, you mentioned. You know, that hurts. Yeah, really he, he bought it at a million, some million, uh, more than a million, and it's worth like seventy nine k or something. That seriously hurts. Uh, burns. <laughs> I, I mean, like, thankfully he can afford it. It's worse for people who can't, but did spend that kind of money to purchase their board apes. No, but it's gonna come back. I mean, eventually, it's the, I think it's NFT, the value is going to, it's not going to go to that level, but it's going to slowly inch back to that level. Well, perhaps, perhaps. But, I think right now the hottest thing out there is AI and how we're going to use AI. Uh, one of the announcements from the BART thing, that we, the, the Pixel event that you were, we talked about earlier, was uh, further integration with AI. So now we're going to have Bard, assistant with Bard or something of that sort, where it's going to make recommendations. Your Google Assistant's now going to make recommendations powered by Bard, which is going to be fantastic. Bard's now fully oh, wow. integrated. Sorry? Oh, wow, nice. Um, they yeah. have the extensions too, right? Google extensions you can add to the Chrome. Uh, I'm not familiar with that, but what I was going to say is so, yeah, go ahead. Like Bard has uh formed a community of sorts with the google suite so youtube google spreadsheets uh word doc drive all of that are linked so basically you're you can you can prompt bart to go through your emails and then get information about that prompt bart to go through your google drive and get information about documents there it's smart now so that's amazing yeah um up for it let's see cool. how it works let's see all right yeah. That's a wrap. See you guys next week. Thank you, guys.